step process to get them cooked today. I'm gonna go ahead and get my water in. I'm just leaving that onion whole, y'all. Leave that onion whole. And what I wanna do, you know, when you're doing beans, I, you have to cover cover the beans with water. Or pretty much, you know, just have them even, not necessarily cover them, but have the uh, beans even with the water. So then, uh, I had my beans in soak, so I'm gonna just take them right out of the colander. I rinse them off. That's one pound and eight ounces of navy beans. So y'all know we get ready to have a whole lot of beans. I decided to go ahead and cook the whole bag, um, and I figured, you know, all we don't eat, we can freeze. And you know, y'all know me, I can eat beans every day of the week, and I'm just good, especially with those turkey tails. So, what we have to do at this point, now I'm gonna put some seasoning, some more seasoning in there. Other than just the, uh... okay, I already guess enough water. I think I might have too much water. Probably take some of that water out of there. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll just leave that in there. I don't think it's gonna be too much. If it is, that broth off would, would be so wonderful. So I gotta have enough broth in there to cook my uh, turkey tails as well. So the other thing that I need to put, y'all, is my uh, dry seasoning. Now this is my everything but the kitchen sink. So I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of that in there. That's two, four teaspoons. Okay, because my turkey meat has some uh, salt in it. So we don't wanna make nothing too salty. So we're just gonna put that in, give it a stir, and I'm gonna put I'll drop a stick of butter in there, but I'm gonna wait until everything gets done. Okay. So I'm leaving that those veggies whole because I don't want them to cook to pieces really. Um so I'm gonna go ahead now and put my let me see if I can get it right the first time, y'all. Got it right. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it off. Turn it all the way around here to the front. Do it just like so. And then I have to put my little weight on. There now. Get it the line on. Okay. Now it is time to plug her in. Y'all notice I'm not on the cook top today. How about that? I'm using another space across the way here, over by the door. I moved some things out of there. So we're gonna turn that on, and we're gonna be using the uh, pressure cooker today. So we have to hit that, okay? Oh, it's not shut, it's telling me, it's telling me to shut it. Let's see, I don't have it locked on. So, hang on one second. Smart machine, smart machine. Okay, let's start it over. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to use your own phone? But not right now, after the video. Because that's not work the TV. Okay, so. And what you cooking, too? Let's turn it off. Stop it. Well, let's see. Off. It's off. Gigi, what you cooking? I am cooking, getting ready to do some, what you call navy beans. They're little white beans. They're really good. So I see you find the, the uh, suckers. Uh, and also, I need to use that pole after you oh, Okay, okay, sure thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that again, y'all. I think I've got it locked on. You can't play around, honey. Well, these, this won't let you play around with it. Okay, so we're going to turn it on. And then we want to first, I think I did, well, I know what I did wrong. Now we need to do, uh, we're going to put, about, uh, let's, let's go ahead and put us 45 minutes. 45 minutes on these beans and we're going to start them, okay? 
and let them go ahead and cook. Once they get down to 45 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and drop in my turkey tails and uh, finish them off. I think that's what time it will take to cook those turkey tails. So this is a pound and eight ounces, which is a pound and a half of navy beans. I'm putting a pound of turkey tails in there. And we'll dro I've dropped a whole onion, a stick of celery in there. And about, and what you know, season your food to your taste as far as salt is concerned. Because you do know if you use turkey tails um, to season with, they uh, smoke turkey, either one, smoke turkey is all it is, that it has some salt content. Or you can cook this up and not put any salt in it. It's just a matter of getting them done to where they taste like they need to taste. Uh, you can cook them with all veggies to get the veggie taste. Uh, with no salt at all, you know, you, for those of you who don't use any salt at all, the process is the same as what you put in them. So, it's up to you what you put in them. So, hang tight and I'll be back. Okay, the other entree on the menu for Sunday dinner today is collard greens. And I've got some kale greens already cooked. So, I'm going to cook these collards up and I'm going to mix them with the kale greens. So, in the pot... I've got some, um, probably about three cups of water and a turkey tail. And of course, those are the collard greens. I'm about a one pound bag. You know, those are pre-cut. They say pre-washed, but of course I have to wash mine in here. Pre-cut, pre-washed uh, collard greens. They are by Natural Greens, I believe it is. Anyways, come in these little one pound bags. So that's what I picked, pulled out of them the extra stalks. I don't like a lot of stalks in my greens, y'all. So, anywho, I am going to um, get these collards going. I've got the meat pretty much cooked. I went ahead and cooked it uh, ahead of time uh, because you have to cook them a little bit longer to do these collards. And then when the collards cook, I'm going to go ahead and um, put in the kale. And we're going to have some collards and kale mix. So, just, you know, let that water come to a boil throw those collards in there and then of course they're going to cook way way down well, a pound of collards is kind of a lot because you know collards don't weigh that much so and for those of you who uh, know how to cook collards and if you got your bunch collards you know you have to cut them and clean them and pick them and all that stuff i just sat since i didn't need but a pound I just, they happen to have these bags, which I was glad because that's an extra work that I did not have to do. So we're going to let these cook down and get some seasoning on top of them. And when uh, they get done, we'll be back. And we're going to add the, um, I got my frozen kale greens out of the freezer. Like I say, frozen leftover anything is good when you need to come back and use it. So this is a good two pounds of, of uh, kale greens. So we'll have a total of three pounds of greens in our pot today. So we'll be right back, y'all. Okay, y'all, I am ready to get my uh, frozen um, kale greens into the pot with my collars. These collars are done. As you can see, they're done. So, I got about a couple pounds of kale grease. I'm putting them right in there. All the juice I've cut up my, I have my nice uh, freezer bag, so cut that freezer bag open and voila. We're going to have some collars and kale cooked together. <clears throat> That's going to make a good pot. A very good pot. I, I like to mix the greens. We're going to put the lid on them, and those uh, kale greens will fall into those, and they'll mix up really, really good. So we're going to move on now to the meatloaf. I'm going to do a big old meatloaf to go along with the collards. And, of course, you know, meatloaf is, and collard greens are just one of those things that's just wonderful together. And I've got some uh, coleslaw left that I made last night. Usually it's like, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We do uh, coleslaw, I mean, potato salad, collard greens, and meatloaf is good. Yeah. If y'all can believe it, I'm not going to do rice. I'm going to let the rice rest. I've got this 20-pound bag of basmati rice, y'all. 
Mm-hmm. We're gonna be on the basmati rice kick for a while. Okay, so I've got um, a two-pound container of of um, this is what brand is this? Shady Valley. This here is ground turkey, so I'm gonna use ground turkey. I'm gonna always use the ground turkey whenever I do my meatloaf. For the most part so this is two pounds of ground turkey in there and then to spruce up the flavor <clears throat> and bump it up just a little bit i'm going to put one pound a little bit over a pound of uh just regular ground beef it's 80 percent lean ground beef so we're gonna have us a big old meatloaf i hope this pan is big this bowl is gonna be big enough y'all I don't think it'll work. But anyway. Okay. I think I'm going to have to get a bigger container. This is not. The bowl is not as big as I thought it was, y'all. Hold on a minute. Found another bowl, y'all. These little bowls here, these are plastic. They're not very heavy. So you can't do too much. So I hope it don't collapse them. Okay, I got that out of there. Definitely needed a bigger bowl, y'all. Definitely. Bring it in. And I've got uh, a medium chopped onion, green pepper, and two stalks of celery. So I'll pour that right on top there. So all this got to be mixed in. Okay. I'm going to get me a pair of gloves to do this because this is going to be a pretty good sized meatloaf, y'all. Get down on there real good. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm just going to go ahead and put everything in that I'm going to put in here, including all my seasonal beans. Those greens will cook it pretty good over there. Yeah, that's cooking that thawing out nicely. Oh yeah, this one be real good. Them two pound of greens mixed in there together, it's gonna be really good. So we're gonna let them continue to simmer. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in all my different seasoning. What's that, everything but the kitchen sink. A couple of tablespoons of that. And I'm gonna add in a cup of breadcrumbs. Okay. That, that ought to be a cup. What y'all think? I'm going to put in one egg. And this is to help to hold it together. I said I'm just putting everything in at once. <clears throat> I'm going to put some additional black pepper in here. Because I like some good black pepper in there. And, oh yeah, don't let me forget my, my good old garlic. Have my see this is why I love having this garlic already made up over here. Get my garlic, my minced, my my chopped up, homemade chopped up garlic and olive oil. Put a couple of teaspoons of that. Maybe even three. Okay, got that going. Okay, and because I like a lot of seasoning mix, <clears throat> and one season that I did not put in here is uh, Italian seasoning. I'm going to put in a little bit of Italian seasoning in just to mix things up a little bit. How about that? Let me find it, find it, find it. I know I haven't used it all up. I see it's always in the back of the cabin. Anyway, I'm going to have to get it out of the back of the cabin here. Let me grab me a glove, y'all. Okay, I want to get this meat off it. It's going to go into the oven at 375. 
I'm gonna get it mixed up. I need to really need to get this. It's like two something now. This needs to be ready about four thirty. Needs to be ready about an hour and a half, I think. We're gonna put it on. Uh, I'm gonna use my I always use my convection bake, and I'm gonna put it in on 375. Go ahead and preheat that oven. Get it started. Get that out the way. Get this out the way. <coughs> I'm thinking something might drop something over here. You need to do a little cleanup over there on the side. On the side. Okay. So now, as I said, I was going to put some extra. I'm going to put about another a teaspoon of black pepper into this meatloaf. Remember, this is about three and a half pounds of meat in there. Now, I use uh, crushed diced tomatoes to make my uh, tomato gravy. So I'm gonna go ahead and open, I got a big can, so I'm gonna use these diced tomatoes. Sorry about that noise, y'all. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because I like to put some of those tomatoes inside of my um, meatloaf. I'm going to go ahead and put what, a couple tablespoons in there. And that should do it. And the rest of it I'm going to use to make my tomato gravy. So I've got one of those 28 ounce cans of um, tomatoes to put in there. So, oh, I, I know what I'm missing. I'm still missing mine. Okay, you see. Let's see. I don't know why it's trying to be elusive. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, there it is right there. It's a winking at me, y'all. It's a winking at me. So I like to put a little bit of that in there. <coughs> it just enhances the flavor. Not a lot. About a couple of teaspoons in there. It makes it taste really good. To me, it does. Anyway. Okay. Now. I've got a new seasoning that I've been using, and I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. It's this one here, Chili Powder Blend. This smells, and tastes, so it's, it, you can smell the chili powder. I don't know what else they got blended. Let's see what they got blended. They got organic chili, organic paprika, sea salt, organic spices, Oregano, cumin, lime, um, and garlic. I knew it was something different about it. It can't fool me. I know my taste. That's why I like it so much. It's not just regular chili powder. It's a blend, and it tastes wonderful. So we're trying it in the meatloaf today, y'all. Okay. So we're going to go with that. And I do believe, let's see. <clears throat> I want to throw it just, just just because I can, I'm going to throw in, so guess what, another one of my favorite ingredients, y'all know it, I'm always experimenting with, uh, with food, I want to make Put too much though, because we gave you know, jerk season's hot, and we don't do hot real well. So we're gonna let it go at that. I think we, we're gonna let it. We're gonna let her go there, and we're gonna get all this mixed up and um, make us a big. We're just gonna. It's gonna go in a big old pan, and we're gonna put in. So we're gonna have us a nice meatloaf for our Sunday dinner. So this is our main meat for the Sunday dinner. Sometimes I cook two meats. We're only gonna do one today because I'm doing kind of a big meatloaf y'all okay. I think this will fit in one of my foil pans hopefully it will fit in one of my foil, foil pans and it's going to be alright so we can get all that going 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 okay 
So the main thing that you have to do at this point, y'all, is get everything mixed well together. And you see all those nice ingredients in there. You know that's going to be good. So y'all hold tight. When y'all see this baby again, it's going to be mixed together. And I'm going to have it on a pan. So hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, y'all. <clears throat> As I was mixing this meatloaf together, it occurred to me, you know, uh, ground turkey, I always put, <clears throat> excuse me, a little olive oil um, to, you know, soften it up because ground turkey is real dry. So what I, it occurred to me today, I went ahead and I did put uh, a couple of tablespoons of uh, olive oil, but then I thought, you know what, I'm going to put me about a couple of tablespoons of smart starch, which is like butter. So I put a uh, smart start, some butter, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to go way out on the limb, and I'm going to throw in uh, a couple of tablespoons of mayo. So what I'm trying to do is make this nice and tender because we got that ground beef going and that's 80%. And we don't want it tough, but we want this um, meatloaf to be succulent. So I got, so my secret weapon today is mayonnaise and butter. If you want to put butter, but if mine is not actually butter, mine is a smart start. So honey, this is going to be the meatloaf of the day. <clears throat> Okay, this is gonna be like a big old meal, big old meal, so a big, big, big meal. This might be my signature meatloaf with this uh, butter and mayo in it. Y'all know I have to mix it up a little bit. Okay, since this is so big, I know it's going in this pan. It's gonna fill this pan, so I'm gonna go ahead now and just sort of do like this and like this. And we're just going to put it right over in there. There it is. And then as it's in there, I'm going to shape it to the shape of the pan. And we got meatloaf going in the oven, y'all. Okay. That little bowl out the way. And we're going to shape this baby into the pan. And we're looking forward to this meatloaf to bake it. I am looking forward to it because I want to know what it's going to be like with all those extra added moisturizing ingredients. Well, it didn't fill the whole pan. Quite, we're going to make it fill the whole pan. It'll be like a nice big square meatloaf. This is three and a half pounds of meatloaf, y'all. Okay, so let's get ready to go into the oven. We'll put it in there uncovered and I'm going to place a piece of foil. Just place a piece of foil on top. Because uh, <clears throat> of course it's going to, want to dry out. This has got to bake for about an hour and a half and then we'll have meatloaf to put on the plate. So we'll be right back y'all. Okay y'all, now I'm getting ready to put the beans and the uh, turkey tails together. What I ended up doing is taking those beans out because they had gotten cooked. Now I know navy beans cook faster than great northern beans. Don't ask me why, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and put these... Um, beans back I'm going to take some of that broth out just in case I don't need it all there's about two cups of broth in there I'm going to put it put these beans back in there and I think we're going to be okay with this amount of beans this amount of broth yeah I'm going to be okay because we like nice broth in our beans Hmm. Okay. We like broth in the bag. So all we got to do here now is get them all mixed in. Okay, so there it is. This is what the beans look like with the broth. So I'm going to go ahead now and just simply, I don't want that juice there. I'm just going to put these turkey hops right in on top of the beans. And there we are. I'm going to turn the, uh, just going to turn it back on for just a few more minutes. And just let me cook a little bit. And these are going to, these beans are going to be perfect, y'all. So y'all hang tight, be back. Okay, y'all, we're getting ready to make the uh, 
tomato gravy for the meatloaf. And here I have that uh, almost, let's see, this was a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. I put about a fourth of a cup out of that can into my meatloaf itself and then the rest of it, which is about 24, about 24, 25 ounces of diced tomatoes. I'll put a fourth of a cup of um, tomato paste, teaspoon of uh, everything but kitchen sink seasoning, a couple tablespoons of brown sugar, and I made up a uh, couple of tablespoons of um, just flour water. So I'm going to pour it in there, and that's going to that's what's going to make it kind of thick like gravy. Stir it around, and listen before you. Put this on your meat loaf, taste it, make sure it is tasting like what you want it to taste like. Get it all mixed up. If you need to add salt, pepper, whatever, or tomato sauce. And I think the tomato sauce part is going to be okay. I don't think you need to add anything to that. So, yeah, just make sure you taste of it, though, seriously, to make sure it tastes like what you want it to taste like. Um... Any of your seasonings that you like, you can put some Italian dress, uh, seasoning in there to spruce it up. Some more onion powder, garlic powder, whatever. A little bit more sugar, a little bit of salt, whatever you want to put in there. And then pour it over your meatloaf and let and put it back into the oven. You can lay the, the uh, foil back over. I, in fact, I cook mine the whole way without the foil. So you can either cook it with or without. It depends on if you want yours to brown. I wanted it to brown, so I decided not to put the foil over so I just been let it cook open oven and it's been cooking now for a good hour it needs to cook about an hour and 15 20 minutes or even an hour and a half because it's a pretty good size meatloaf and just make sure it tastes like what you want it to taste like put it back in the oven now no we want some meatballs so I got these little ready-made meatballs I'm gonna put them in a little pan and he gonna have him some meatballs instead of meatloaf kept hitting that meatball so we can fix them up. I'm just going to pour some of that meat sauce right over those meatballs and pop them right into the oven and that's what he's going to eat. Okay, so y'all, I will be right back shortly. We'll pull this entire meal together. Thank y'all for stopping by. Thank you for your well wishes, your prayers, your comments, and your compliments. And please always remember to pray without season. We'll come back and preview the whole meal. Just hang on a minute. Okay, y'all, dinner is ready. The big meatloaf is out, looking good, smelling good. And there's some meatballs for Nori. You know, same meat, but he wanted meatballs, so we'll accommodate his little taste buds. And we got some good old fluffy jasmine rice to eat with the beans and the gravy from the meatloaf. And, of course, we got back there our mixed uh, kale greens and collard greens. I'm just reheating those. So they're ready to go, y'all. So we get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. So thank y'all for stopping by one more time. Listen, y'all, please don't forget to pray with us. See, we got wars and rumors of wars raging throughout the land. We need to continue to pray without season for everybody because we are praying for the world these days because there's something going on in every corner of this world that is prayer worthy. So we're going to continue to pray without ceasing. We're going to keep those prayers going up so God will continue to bless us. We're going to pray for our school children, our administrators in our homes, our families, on our job, just everywhere. We're just going to pray about everything, y'all. So until I decide to cook again, hope you're having a blessed Sunday evening. Get in the kitchen and cook you something good if you haven't already. Love you guys. Toodles. Pray without ceasing, y'all. Good old navy beans with turkey tails. Good old jasmine steamed jasmine rice. Meatballs. Meat sauce.